button as well. It's a very different subject today um, because it's it's something that you probably wouldn't want to do necessarily, but it's a useful skill to learn, mm. if you know what I mean. We did. Hello, Dan. We did a long, long time ago. We did um, something like this in drawing. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think if, if you paint yeah, anything yeah. involved, with figures mm. you're going to need fabric and i mean knotted fabric is a is just a specific mm. thing but it is useful knock in a bag there right so all i'm going to do is use Payne's gray and titanium white and uh we'll try and spend 45 minutes so obviously i'm on my own in the shop um the link for YouTube's in our stories, Rosemary. I've, I've been really, really busy this morning, unfortunately. It's been non-stop with people calling in the shop since I opened. So um, the link is in our Facebook stories and our Instagram stories. I haven't been able to share it elsewhere just because I, I literally haven't had 30 seconds to myself. Right. So, but if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you should get an automatic notification that we're live on, on that side of things. So the way I paint fabric, excellent, thanks Rosemary, um, is I paint the mid-tone first. Because it's actually, well, the, I call it a mid-tone, but in some places it's known as the local colour local color as in the color a color void of highlights and shadows so like the the real the true color of an object you know what i mean oh, like okay. um my my shirt would just be light blue the local color would be light blue um because then you've got to lighten it and darken it um the carpet would be here a uh, mid gray and the table sort of a a biscuit color so you just mix the local color I, I i've never understood the terminology but we sometimes it, but yeah yeah so, so you move out from that yeah yeah because it's easier to start with the mid color and then lighten it or darken it yeah. um so i've sketched it out I've, I've roughly sketched out the shadow i've put this is this is actually a photograph that i've got the, the fabric is in the classroom it's on the table on the other side of the room um so um it does exist in real life now for you on facebook you won't have the little photograph as is appearing on youtube because i i can't do that on my phone i can only do it in one place um so i've got a little flat brush and i'm going to mix the paints gray this is quite a bluey paints gray so i'm going to mix that with some white because i can't go any darker than that and I can't go any lighter than that. So what I'm going to have to do is mix something in between the two. Because if I make it too dark as my mid-tone, yeah, the darks know. won't show up. Yeah, and if I make it... No, exactly. And if I make it too light, my highlights aren't going to show up. So, so like little just, uh, just a little flat brush. Little like, flat. like I don't even know. Flat. Some flat brushes are numbered. And some this is like a number oh, eight, yes. which means nothing. Okay. And some are given... Flat brushes used to be measured by parts of an inch so this is what maybe half an inch so I'm just going to shove it on technical term where are you all watching from today don't just say bed or living room it's nice to know where in the world you're watching from occasionally we get people from um, all over the world coming in and um, we say so we're live on YouTube and Facebook multi-streaming if i add more knowledge i'd probably multi-stream from other bits as well That's a lovely color, that is. it's like well the paint's gray itself gloucestershire adderbury oh adderbury nice paint's gray is a blue black you see and it's actually traditionally made from ultramarine and mars black so you could make it yourself uh, but that does mean that as long as it's got Ultramarine and Mars Black in it, it's up to the discretion of the company how much of the blue or black they put in. So some paints, especially watercolours, I'm leaving little gaps. Mm, they could be more blue than others. 
Yeah. The, uh, I mean, actually, case in point, Winsor & Newton Artists Watercolour, Payne's Grey, is almost like indigo. It's blue. Whereas Cotman Watercolour, which is also Winsor & Newton, but their student brand, their Payne's Grey, is more of a true Payne's Grey, which is it's really interesting. You wouldn't know until you tried it. No, you wouldn't know. Because there's a there's, with with paint manufacturers there's this sort of club that they can all join and the ones that have joined it will have an ASTM mark on the tube and I think that's the American Standard Trademark or something and if they're joined in that group it means that all of their colours have to have similar properties so like I say Payne's Grey will have to be ultramarine and Mars Black but ultramarine will have to look like ultramarine whereas some of the cheaper paints you get some of the colours don't do that thank you Rosemary bump me figures up wonderful they shouldn't be in theory but they may well be okay. if they're made properly they it's will be same. but like with our watercolours that we make ourselves um, it's not identical because we make it with the same stuff but it, it just quantities are a little bit difficult when you're making on smaller scale. smaller scale um we've got the the guitar the oh, christian okay. guitar man outside now so if you can hear some things the cafe ladies like to go and yeah, join in with maracas and tambourines and sometimes there's a kazoo <laughs> it all goes on in this street So we're just blocking in. Have you? <laughs> Want to swap? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been nice. We've I've I've we've had quite a few people in this morning having a chat and buying a few things which is nice because saturday mornings is often quiet until i go live and then everyone turns up usually yes. <laughs> oh the cafe has been really busy lately which is really lovely to see for Kathy. I mean it, it's um it was her birthday yesterday so she's getting a lot of her regulars coming in and well wishing. Oh let it shine that's what it is today. Sometimes people come into the back end of my shop and go, well, are there any seats here? Oh, thank you, Patricia. Thank you for the stars. Um, and um, and um, and we go, no, because this is an art shop. No, but it's not a nice view with all that scaffolding at the moment. They, I'm hoping... Yeah, because it makes the road a lot narrower. They can't... Um, that pavement's totally out of bounds over the opposite side until they can fix uh, the building, which is a shame. But good that it's getting fixed. Yeah. No, absolutely. So no, middle, no. Oh, have they got an encore going on? Oh, right. It's like Glastonbury out here, yeah, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> We've got guitars, tambourines, and all sorts going on. No. No. I used to, when I was younger, I used to go to um, Donington Monsters of Rock, but that was back in the days when it was just one in it, when it was just one day, and you came home afterwards. I'm not into all this camping out business. No, that's what that you see. That's what puts me off. I, 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 you know, I'm not a snob at all. I'm extremely, extremely working class, but. I just think in 2023, the least I expect in life is a shower that runs and a toilet that, uh, and a plumbed toilet. Um, I went to Crop Ready one year, but my friend's husband had a workshop there, so we went back and camped outside his workshop because there was nothing but toilets. Oh, um, how better. That's a much better idea, Sue. So. folk festival in Trowbridge many, many years ago, and it was awful, and I just thought, I'm never going to do this again because the toilets were 
So we've got little gaps just so I know where everything's going to go. Um, I could have done, a, I suppose, a sort of glaze um, to trap the pencil lines in a little bit. I don't know. You see, this, this bit is shadow. Snob. No, Daniel. Don't be naughty. I'm not. I'm not a snob. I just want a toilet. Because even at events I've been to, day events, the portaloos, they're not managed or maintained throughout the day. No. So it's not great by the end no, of an event. No, exactly. Even really good posh events. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of the most important things, isn't it? It is when you're there all day. Mm. And drink has been taken. Yes. Or even not. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're there for... If you're there for eight hours, you're definitely going to need to at least visit once. Right, so I'm going to keep the gaps to a minimum. What a lovely conversation we've got today. We, we do. And it's always when you and I are in the building. <laughs> right. Oh, they've been very upper class, so okay, yes, like they have one. <laughs> As my friend says to me, do you do posh? <laughs> no, we don't need posh, do we? Keeping it real, Sue, that's what we do. We keep yeah. it real. Right, I think that's a fairly uniform mix. I've had to mix it up a couple of times, but I think that kind of works. So now that gives me the opportunity to lighten and darken. I'm probably going to move to a little round brush now because the this one, although it's a small brush, is is a little bit tricky to get into all the nooks and crannies. Yeah. So I'm going to go in with a bit more dark. You see, this paint's great. It is lovely, but it is quite blue. It's almost like a royal blue, and I like it. And I like paint's grey. Um. You see, that's really dark in here. Yeah, go on. I think it's a name. Just the name of a person. Name of a person. Yeah, I think so. Or uh, an artist. Or an artist. Um, oh, Mary says, oh, you've been to Ascot. Portaloos at Ascot are immaculate mirrors, hand soap, towels. Ascot, Portaloo. Yeah. See, you just go to better events than me, obviously, <laughs> Mary. We, we just don't like <laughs> <places>. No. <laughs> no, like Cotman Watercolours. Yeah is i think um named after the artist john sell cotman okay. who was a watercolor painter so there are certain names in art that will be to do with the named after artists like turner's yellow paint and and you know all of that um so i'm going in a little bit darker why you because you might think well why why i don't do anything to do with fabric so why do i need to know this well, actually, if you paint figures and faces, fabric folds and wrinkles are identical because of... of it's Because it, if you're drawing a wrinkle on a face, your tendency is to just do a line, and it's not a line. It's like it, it goes in and out um, the way it catches the light. Look at that as fabric rather than skin, though. Yes. Yeah, so we're not wrinkly. We're just pleated. That's a bit iron. Yeah, we just need a good steam iron, <laughs> and we'll all be all right. But also, you know, even if you don't, even a tablecloth or a curtain or whatever. Yeah, if you're doing a still life, it yeah. will it will need it something. It, but it's it's kind of gradual in a way with fabric. You you either get very definite lines, like on this piece of the knot, where it goes against the dark, it's highly defined in here. But then this piece, it starts defined on the left, but because this is underneath, that kind of fades out. So I'm kind of using just a little bit less pressure with my brush and skimming it on. Because this is acrylics, it's drying quickly, which I know is the bane of a lot of people's lives because of the speed it dries. 
I like acrylics, but I'm using my finger as well. Um, oh, yes. Because Mary, Mary on here yeah. was a wild card at Landscape Artist of the Year um, last year. Was it last year, Mary? It was, wasn't it? What were the toilet facilities? That's what, that, that, that's what, yeah, because that was at Ascot. Oh, that was at Ascot, was it? Oh, okay, yes. Oh, Rosemary says one of her cousins once asked her grandmother if she could iron her because she was all creased. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's a nicer kind of way of looking at it, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, I'm so now. Uh, acrylics are wonderful because you can build up layers and you can go from light to dark and there's you know there's a lot more versatility with them, but they dry quickly like that's that's already dry, whereas oils are like acrylics but they dry slowly. However, some people don't like oils because they dry too slowly. Um, so that's why I, we, in the class we tend to use water mixable oils because they dry faster than standard oils but slower than acrylics. So, and where does gouache fit into that particular? Gouache is more watercolour. So if you think of gouache, I mean it's acrylics are water based yeah. but gouache is kind of in between watercolour and acrylics in that it's an opaque watercolour. Right, okay. And but quickly, it does dry quickly but you can reblend it. Okay. What, when acrylics are dry, you yeah. can't reblend it. It's it's basically plastic. Mm. So maybe gouache then. Yeah, gouache is quite. I do that on a Monday evening, the third Monday evening of the month, okay. and we do all sorts of subjects in that. I'll have a look in your little. We used to do a, a gouache class every Wednesday morning, but it's just not as popular, mm. um, and it, it wasn't cost effective to run the class every week, so. I combined it on a Monday. So where I want a hard line, I'm leaving a hard line. Where I want a bit of a blend, I'm just dragging it out with my finger. But you can see it's kind of taking shape a little. See, that's a little bit more subtle. But it's, it's good to try it, I think. I know we get some people that do actually paint along with us in 45 minutes, which is impressive, to say the least. I'm trying to work out what this extra line is here. What have I drawn on there? What's that one? I'm going to go dark with it. Oh, I just... Yeah, it's the dark. I hadn't made it wide enough. But it looked all right, though. It looked all right. Mm -hmm. And I did look at Liz's hippo as well. Did it look like a hippo? I didn't have a chance to look. Well, well now, when you first look at it, but once now you, you know. know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, there was someone here the other day, wasn't there, who came from the Bloxham, the, Lo the Bloxham Arts Centre. All right. Oh, yes. And she showed me what she'd done on her thing, and I thought, well, what is this going on? We've got, we have some very talented students that come to the class. I'd like to say it's all down to the skilled tuition, of course, but, you know, it's not always the case. I, well, I think what, as well, what it is, is, is that there's no judgment. And there's no, no, not so at all. you feel like you can experiment, you can, you know. It's okay to try. Absolutely, and I think that's, you know, that gives people the opportunity. Because there's nothing worse opportunity. than if you think, oh, gosh, you know, uh, there's always going to be a little bit of a, oh, what if I'm not as good as everybody else kind of thing. But actually, in, in our classes, everybody's really... In fact, we almost go the other way, don't we, and go, oh, no, yours is better than mine. Oh, no, yours is better than mine. No, yours is better than mine. I wish I could paint like that. So everybody ends up wishing they painted like somebody else. And in our drawing class, like you say, everybody's is different. Everybody's yeah. Different. No, not at all. Yeah, 
It it it's It is. When, when I retrained in adult education, the biggest thing that we were told was how much of a barrier just walking into a classroom or learning environment can be for an adult, yeah. depending on what your experience was at school. Yes, exactly. yeah. um, you know, we get a lot of people which, and, and it, it breaks my heart, it really does, where they have waited until they've retired to pick up art because... Their art teacher at school said, you never amount to anything. I haven't done art since, Sarah's little art class. Yeah. I haven't done art since, I didn't do it at A-level. Um, I'm not even sure I did it at O-level. Um, so basically, since I was about 13. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. a shame. Because you think, how many years have you missed, missed yeah. just from somebody's comment yeah. to you um, that probably may not have been meant as harshly as as it sounded um but you don't know it doesn't matter does it because it's how you feel about that and and it's so sad which is why i really do try to be as supportive as i can in the lessons because you know when when you've done something that's a bit naff you really don't need me to come along and go, that's yeah. a bit naff, because yeah. you already know. Yeah. But if I can try and find something in it that is working well... Yeah. Or, or, like you say, now, what, yeah, what you could do is this, yeah. Yeah, to, to, yeah. to bring that forward, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, constructive criticism, yeah. you know? Exactly. Okay, but, but know, like, that's all. I mean, I, if I know you well, mm. I will joke about yes. it. Like, I had one regular student who was really struggling, and I said... Have you ever thought of taking up knitting? Um, but she knew yeah. that I was joking, yeah. and she does some amazing yeah, stuff. She knows somebody well enough to be able to do this. Yes. So that's fine, but but if, if I got a brand new student I and I knew that they were nervous, yeah. I would, that would not. Be, would be your opening gambit. No. And to be honest, that's often why I chat a lot um, in, in the classes. It's to try and distract you from feeling so stressful about it and you don't realise that you're painting something and then at the end of the lesson we've had a chat about Portaloose and yes. and then before and you know it you it. think oh I've just done this painting when did I do that oh bless you Mary thank you oh thank you Rosemary everyone is everyone is so supportive and friendly it's true um because I think as students you've all been there and you're all at different stages of where you're at i mean not necessarily in terms of ability but in terms of being in a, a learning environment um so it does make a big difference you know, I, I think about my mum because she she's never done art but she's always wanted to yeah. and she says i'd be absolutely useless at it and i said mum it doesn't matter but now she's got to the stage now where she probably couldn't do it no and that's because a shame isn't it ability. Yeah. Well, we get people come in and go, oh, I'd love to come to an art class, but I'm not very good. And I go, well, that's why you come to an art class. I don't. If you were really good, you wouldn't need to come no, Exactly. To and I don't know if I'd want you in my class if you were going to be better than me. Thanks. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting that... Yeah, that's, we try to keep it nice and varied here because, it, you know, there's always something for everyone then. I mean, if I had my way, it would just be mountains, trees and gnomes. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, you know, I do... Sometimes you do have to diversify. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, Mary, you must have an arty party sometimes. Um, I... I Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I did wonder about that because I've been watching Bob again a little bit on yeah. Sky. Now I've got the Sky back, and um, he just paints a lot of mountains and trees. Did he ever get fed up with painting mountains and trees all the time? I don't know because I still get excited about it, and I still twenty-five years now I've been teaching. But I still, when a colour 
mixes and I think, oh, that's a lovely colour. Even though I've made that colour 300 times, I just go, oh, I love that colour. Especially greens, if I get a nice green that works. You just go, oh. Yes. Yeah, I've got. I find I've got. I've got music that I like for different feelings that I'm going through, and there is some music that I absolutely love. But if I've got a different frame of mind, I can't stand to hear it. Um, that you know, it's interesting, and I think I. Yeah. 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 I was a terror for making mixtapes, and then half of them I never wanted to listen to. I was just trying to fast forward to the one that I really wanted. I could have just done with one song on loop, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we've got our darker tones in. It's looking all right. I've still got, you can probably see the camera's picking up a few whiter bits in there. Um, and that's just so I know where the light things are going. So. You, you need to think, let me nip and get that fabric. I'll move this paint out of the I way. It it's all right. I need the step count, Jane. Okay. It's a totally different color, so don't judge on the color. But if you look, if I can find a piece of fabric here, can you see the way the light is hitting it? Let's find something to point at. In here, we've got a very dark area and a shadow cast. But here is the lighter area here really dark which it because this is a curve fabric either curves or goes into hard angles but generally it's a soft angle um even even this bit isn't a point it's a curve and you can see there that that's the darkest point where the light can't get at it that's the lightest point but from there to there you've got a range of depth of tone that reaches from light to dark. But at other points, like if I do a, an absolute pleat like that, it's just a hard line. But then the shadow there is a hard line as well. But it's not as dark as right in there. So it, there's a lot of observational work with fabric that you really have to start looking at your lights and darks, which is why I do it with a mid-tone first, because then that I know that's the colour. And I can faff about then to my heart's content. Oh, lovely. Yeah, m with Mary, we um, we used to, on, who's uh, on Facebook, uh, pre-pandemic, uh, for her birthdays and anniversaries, uh, her husband used to buy a, arty parties so i'd go round uh, uh and we'd go around her dining table on an evening and there'd be a bottle of wine and we'd do a little watercolor mary would pick the subject and um we would do that i don't have a lot of evenings free anymore um to do that full time i've just mixed just up her, just her, her and her friends, and her friends yeah. yeah so i've now the doing the hard edge with the white and then blending it in. I want that hard edge, but then I want the blend. So I could almost have two brushes on the go, one that's just slightly damp to fade that out look. Can I just ask you about the paper, Barry? What is that this is canvas, oh, okay. so it's... Um, it's a pad of actual. It has, yeah. It's it's actual canvas that you buy on a roll, but it's primed in a pad. Okay. So you just peel it out, and there's only one side you can paint on. It's sometimes quite tricky to yeah, to determine side, which side, but one side's got primed painting on, um, and I find it works really well with acrylics. really well so then in here I've got a bit of a line that I can lighten see this is where it's quite nice with acrylics that I can lighten parts not lighten others but I can soften 
that as it comes in. So the camera is going to freak out a little bit because this is wet and it's going to be a bit shiny. But can you see how that's giving it a bit of a 3D feel? So this isn't a wet, what's this called, a brush? This isn't a wet brush, it's a damp brush. If it was too wet, it wouldn't really work. So I'm looking at all of the hard edges and then having a blend in. So the underpaint isn't wet, it's dry. But you know, that which fascinates you, even though I'm painting it, it also fascinates me. It's it's a, it's a bizarre thing that I can't explain, but I'm I'm also I'm the teacher and I'm still excited by this and I go oh no that's worked really well and then when I look at it on the screen there's nothing better than somebody that's passionate about their subject and that always comes across in teaching as you know when somebody's enjoying it the yeah. teaching and the process yeah and that always makes it so much better no I, I mean I look at sometimes I look because I've got my spare monitor here and I look at it because I'm looking at my work like you do and you're really critical and you think oh gosh I hope the students haven't seen that bit or whatever that's gone a bit wrong but then I'll glance upon the monitor and I go oh do you know what I really like that that's a really good picture it is we, we are and we're so self-critical and I don't think that will ever go it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it for. The thing is, you know, the pupil, you just hope somebody's not granted a meal because of you. I felt, you know, <laughs> you're right. When I've, when I've given out uh, um, some art history lectures, I've dreaded, um, dreaded having some students there that may know more about the topic than me because that, that would just really not enjoy I think the thing about being a teacher is to actually still not be frightened that you know that you don't have to know everything you don't absolutely and when well, even what I find when I'm doing things ready for a class I'll come up with a technique and I'll go do you know what I wish I was taught that when I was learning because it's so much better I wish I was my teacher um, <laughs> but you know and you do, I don't think you ever stop learning, especially with art. I don't think you should ever stop learning because there's always something new. I mean, I'm I'm also playing with digital art at the moment. I'm learning Procreate on the iPad because it's something really different. Yeah. And I was always a bit like, oh, digital art, that's really wrong. Yeah. It's not wrong. It's just a different way of doing well, something. Isn't it? Yeah. But then when actual <laughs> photography came out, the Victorian artists were like, that's going to steal my job. Mm -hmm. It's going to take jobs away from us. Um, it's just the fear of something new, isn't it? Yeah, and the fact that you might not be any good at it. Yes. <laughs> and we all want a piece of that pie, don't we? How am I doing for time? Oh, we're doing all right for time as well. So I'm kind of having to look at layering and some things that I've made darker I might have to lighten and vice versa. See, I, I, it's, it does, you can feel it 
for me, contrast is so important. So I need to have that needs to be a little bit lighter. There. And then there's this is where I went a little bit wrong. Now I'm doing it almost like a glaze here, and that that's where it can go a little bit weird because there's not enough oomph in the paint. Well, hopefully, I'll be able to um, have time to add a little bit of shadow because I've sketched it out, and that little bit of shadow should really give it a bit of something. So in here, I'm kind of pushing the paint a little bit more because I don't want it to be bright and I don't want it to be dark, but it needs to be slightly darker than the mid-tone. It, it, there really is so much observation involved in doing something like this. So I'm trying my hardest not to do that. Well, I know what this fabric looks like in my head. I want to make it look like the actual photo of the fabric. And if I was um, doing this as a commission and it was somebody's dress or something, it would have to hang in a specific way. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us. See that line? Kind of there's something now that comes around like that. That's better. And then I can soften that in. I mean, if you look at this very closely, it's not that perfect. But it's in 45 minutes. We did a class on this, didn't we, Rosemary? Um, when did we do that? A couple of months ago. And we did a piece of knotted fabric. It, I don't know if it was the same the same fabric. It's a different knot, that's for sure, because I, I didn't leave it knotted. Was it blue or was it, was it this fabric? Because this is window fabric from the shop I grew up working in. So damp brush, it's it's starting to take shape, but this area does need to be lighter. <laughs> well, actually, working on canvas is actually better for fabric because you've actually got fabric texture on there. Yeah. Well, I mean, the good thing about that is the watercolours will still be fine. Yeah. They, um, because they're, if they're solid, if they're solid pans, they tend to last really well. Yes, there was, um, um, uh, my auntie, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Oh well, there's, that's got one of the biggest pre-raft collections, hasn't it? There, Birmingham Art Gallery. So yeah, she'll she'll be in good hands. I haven't been for years since we used to take the school trips. Oh, Frederick Southall. Oh, lovely. Yes. Oh, okay. 
because I don't know there I don't know if Birmingham Art Gallery is open again at the moment because they were doing some refurbs or something to it and there it was closed for a while so I need to go a little bit stronger with that yeah do a trip Well, when I used to do the art history for the WEA, oh, yes, we yeah. did we did do um, trips. I did one of the Ashmolean. Mm -hmm. So we did um, Renaissance art. I'm adding slightly more white to some of it. We did Renaissance art, and I spoke to the Ashmolean in advance to know what work was actually being on display there. So we talked about that. So we did that in the morning, had lunch, and then we all drove down to the Ashmolean to see it in real life. Yeah, it's a good it's a good institute. I was the uh, Oh right, okay. Yeah, I used to be the art history lecturer for South North Ants, Oxfordshire and West Midlands. Or the WEA. Long time ago. Starting, it's it's adding the the light a bit. Will this inspire you to finish it, Rosemary? Probably not, will it? It's trust in the process. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'll I know how far to go because of when the time runs out today. But it's something that I could potentially spend longer on if I wanted to and it is just looking for the little subtleties in lines and the colour gets almost glazed in places and it's contrast it's where you want oh good um, I'm going to do a little bit of a runny Payne's grey glaze for shadow. So this is technically monochromatic, isn't it? Because I am using one colour and black, uh, or one colour and I'm lightening and darkening. So I'm going to put the shadow on as a glaze. Because I don't want it to, to, to resemble the same colour, but that's going to help me. because I'll need to know, do I have to darken something or lighten it now while it's up against that shadow. If you doing this in pencil, would you do the same thing? Would you start with the mid-tone mid and then work? Do you know what? I, I would probably would in the sense that I'd do it in graphite powder mm. and then I'd use a putty eraser for highlights and then like a 7 or 9B right in dark. and then the tortillon to f smudge. So, so where I've been using the damp yeah, brush... I'd use that paper stump to fade. Let's go a little darker underneath for relief. So that's quite runny. I'll, I will get the hairdryer on this. Yeah, see tattoos elephants on Saturdays. <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> right, let me quickly blast that with a hairdryer so I can just do a few lighter highlights and then we'll call it a day. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, who lives down the road from there. Well, yeah, because it, we've got the link because it's a 45 minute demo. So I've got the link that I'll be able to send her and then they can do it. They can all do it together. Let me just do a few little highlights. I've got it put aside ready. Again, we've got that contrast. Yeah, I definitely can't do much more because the time has beaten us today. Yes, but I think you did of, um, of um, the uh, people's car. Yes. Yes, well, um, I think it's a friend of mine. He likes it so much he wants it. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, well. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, I think that will be it next month while I've got you. Where am I? The new brochure. Yes, I know. You're into July now. Oh, we're doing a portrait. Oh. I say we. I'll be doing a portrait. Is that Why? The 5th I, of August? 5th of August. Oh, I am. Do you know what? I, sometimes I look at these and I think, what? Why did I write yeah, this? Did decide that? In water soluble pen, oh. I'm doing a portrait in 45 minutes. So that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Um, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see what I'm going to do for that one. Um, yeah. Oh, Diochan. Um, but this is something that you really could try and build up. And, you know, even as I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking, oh, that actually needs to be a little bit more subtle there. But when you're only using black and white or just one colour and a lighter tone it's much easier to be able to add the subtleties to it and um, oh the Ashmolean it is a beautiful building Elizabeth you'd, you'd love it um, it's got loads of different exhibitions on and they what was the last one that they had there the one they've got at the moment I think it's still Labyrinth isn't it Labyrinth it's, it's But, you know, even Banbury Museum... Oh, thank you, Julie. Thank you, Patricia. Even Banbury. You have to even you even a town like Banbury. Our museum is brilliant. We've, we've, It's just finishing tomorrow, isn't it? Tomorrow... Tomorrow is the last day of... the Revealing the Human Form. Um, and there is... Uh, it's all statues and sculptures of the human form. Um, Anthony Gormley, Barbara Hepworth, Henry Moore. Any other names Pelosi, you can? Palotzi, yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, that woman, oh, thank you, V. Her name is Douglas. Um, is that the pregnant one? No, no. That's the one with all the sort of metal. Oh, oh, uh, she was there the other day, yes, wasn't she? Know, and yes, there. and me, because she wasn't. I don't think she was at the preview. No, she wasn't. Um, so yeah, you still got today and tomorrow to check out the, and it's the first time in the country that all of those sculptures are are curated into one exhibition. Last time, because we curate, we put that together. So yeah, they're, they're never yeah. Really unique, on show so they're very so unique. Fun. If you like modern sculpture, there's some traditional sculpture in there as well of figures, but the Anthony no, Gormley is amazing. The, um, so um, was, take care. Yeah, Thank you very much. It's been lovely to have your company. Enjoy the weekend. It's going to be a little bit cooler this weekend, I believe, but enjoy well, yourself. It was quite not chilly, but there was, I felt yeah, it's about 16, 17 degrees, which for me is perfect. But take care, and hopefully we'll see you next month. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.